If you're a fisherman on Long Island and you like to fish for striped bass, then winter feels like it's the longest season of the year. There's no fishing for stripers. In fact, there is no salt water fishing at all. But when spring comes, this cold world changes. It becomes a fantastic fishing ground. And when the striped bass arrive, I have to go fishing for them. After months of anticipation and waiting for the striped bass to return, the spring run begins in April, and that's when we'll hit our back base and shallow water fishing grounds, where the temperature and bait will attract early season striped bass. At first we'll find schoolies, which are smaller bass, but they will be followed by bigger mature fish, which first stop along the spawning grounds on their northern migration. We'll use clousers, deceivers, and poppers to entice the bite. But mostly, we're just happy to be out fly fishing for this amazing fish again.
Oh, nice. Awesome. Woo. Over the past few years, we have noticed that the spring run is not what it used to be. The quantity and quality of the fish we line has been going down. It's getting harder to find larger fish, and there are fewer smaller bass. So I wonder if this is happening just to us, or is something else going on? I wanted to get the opinion of someone experienced someone that has lived through the decline and recovery of the striped bass fishery, and I couldn't think of a better person other than Captain Paul Dixon. Hi, I'm Captain Paul Dixon, and I've been a fishing guide out here in Montauk since the early 90s, and uh, sort of experienced it all out here, between the flats and the summer blue fishery, all the way into the blitzes of the fall with the false albacore, the bluefish, and the striped bass. So uh, in the early days of the flats, um, it was sort of unique because in those days the limit on fish was 36 inches. We would go out and maybe between the boats you'd get 10 or 15 fish, but the fish would come in school after school, you know, waves down the beach and, and big individuals, you know, like I said, up to 40 inches, you know, was usually about the largest fish that you could take on the flats. Very similar to the, uh, to the blitzes, they seem to be the same fish, the fish that live back in the estuaries, they haven't moved out to the deep water yet. Um, and those are the same fish that come out of the estuaries and create the blitzes in the, in the fall. So, um, but the flats early on was, was biblical. You know, it was, it was unbelievable how it was and how many fish you would see. Uh, now you just have to work harder. You have to really, uh, where before I could literally go out of my marina and, and pull down the, the edges of uh, beaches nearby, now you're going to have to run and play the tides and everything else. So it's a little different scenario. You have to mix it up and it's a little harder than it used to be. I'd say quite a bit harder, but that being said, it's still a hell of a fishery. It's a little right, it's a nice size fish. All right, good job, boys. That bad. Oh, brutal. Right off the left, right here.
So we now have to work harder for fewer fish on the flats, but it's still an amazing way to catch a fish. But this video wouldn't be complete without talking about Montauk fishing. The legendary fall blitz is at the point. Bluefish, false albacore, and striped bass. Unfortunately, in order to show the amazing Montauk striped bass action in the fall, we have to go back to the video from many years ago. And that's because the bass blitzes, acres of fish feeding on top, have yet to come back. So I guess uh, one of the big questions I get all the time, especially now, is what do you think the state of the fishery is in? And um, unfortunately, I believe that we're in trouble once again. Um, the reason I say that is when I first started out here in Montauk, uh, coming here anyway, in the 80s, there really was no striped bass and they had sort of disappeared from overfishing. Uh, when I began guiding in the early 90s out here, uh, the fish had made this tremendous comeback, one of the greatest success stories in conservation history. So in the early days, early 93, 94, 95, uh, there was just an abundance of fish everywhere, especially on the flats where we fly fish for them. Uh, there was just uh, horrendous amounts of fish. And uh, it was sort of biblical times. As an example, uh, in the early days, if I went on the flats, I'd catch 10 fish, and five of those fish would be 36 to 41 inches. Nowadays, if I go out, I'm lucky if I get one fish over 36 inches per season on the flats. And a lot of that had to do with it went from 36 inches to 28 inches for one fish to two fish. The commercial take was increased drastically and then coupled with bad spawning uh, from 2001 on, uh, Mother Nature threw a little glitch and there's just been too much killing and so the state of the fishery now is, I believe, in trouble. You know, unfortunately, uh, we've sort of done the same thing and repeated our mistakes again and gone back and, uh, you know, fished a little too hard and as the regulations say that you can kill you know whatever but uh, if you spend a lot of time in the water for the past 25 years you know it's it's really amazing and and sort of heartbreaking to see how the fishery has slid gradually downhill so hopefully there's some good year classes in 2011 and 2015 this year in Montauk there was a, a quite a few small fish but the blitzes once again didn't even start till late October so uh, you know there's hope there's uh, a big body of big fish that were those fish that are 25 years old that were born back in 96 and 97 those are the 40 pounders now that follow the bunker schools and and everybody unfortunately pounds and takes home and you know it's nothing like a good you know fish barbecue but Unfortunately, uh, it's really taken its toll when you're killing all the breeders and the, and the breeding itself isn't that good, I believe. So uh, I think that for the future, you know, I still have great hopes and everything because I think as anglers that people can come together and especially through education, education of the young people, the new fishermen, uh, it makes a huge difference because it's not necessary to always take home a fish and people have to believe that uh, the fish is more important than cooking something because it's a lot more fun to catch them than to kill them. So uh, I think that, you know, there's some great year classes and, and uh, as they get into the system, you know, you hope and pray that, uh, that everything comes back, you know, and we don't repeat the mistakes that we've made in the, in the past. So uh, I have high hopes. Uh, my name is Jim Levison. I have been guiding saltwater fly anglers in Montauk since 1999. I wound up here 
after being invited by my friend Paul Dixon, who had been guiding here for almost the past decade. Okay, I was very lucky as a, uh, as a uh, part-time professional outdoor photographer to get into, uh, to fish on Mo in Montauk uh, during the great, uh, during many of the great uh, blitz years where, where it was not uncommon to actually see acres of uh, blitzing striped bass. The, um, the striped bass fishery in Montauk for the fly angler is driven by the tremendous amounts of, of uh, bay Atlantic bay anchovies that show up anywhere starting anywhere from mid-August to early September and lasting through early November. Uh, and I was extremely fortunate to have been on the water during that period to collect some um, remarkable images of, of uh, striped basses feeding during these feeding frenzies. That uh, unfortunately has not happened in the last couple of years, uh, but again, once again, we're, we're hopeful that with proper conservation methods, that over the next few years with, with some healthy uh, year classes of striped bass coming back, that uh, we, uh, we do hope to see them in the future. just heard from two experienced, remarkable fishing guides and their thoughts on striped bass conservation. It's time for all of us to do our part to help restore the striped bass fishery and to ensure long-term sustainability. So that the next fishing generation on Long Island can experience the way it used to be. Well, hold on. You, I mean, am I supposed to introduce myself or? And uh, you got a couple of trips with me this uh, this spring. <laughs> I'm a little light on those trips on the flat. Yeah, we'll take care of that. <laughs>